the system is failing. We're going to have more homelessness, more unemployment, and the government has to print more money. It's a command and control economy where the government tells you everything. I just don't trust our government. You know, and they're going to have to start printing pretty quickly. And the more they print, the less value purchasing power the dollar has, or the loonie, or the yen, or the peso. People are talking about inflation. I think we're in depression right now, and we're going to be a biggest depression in world history. In the 1970s, that's when the world was changing. The biggest bust in the history of the world is coming up. It's pensions. They trusted the government. They trusted their pension would be there, and it's going to go bust. And that's us. We'd get crushed. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. And what is going to be a powerful video for today? Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse leaves nothing unsaid. Ripple has quite literally saved the crypto industry, not just by defeating the SEC and being called a non-security, but also by making Fortress Trust customers hit by a security incident whole as part of their acquisition. Ripple continues to be leading from the front in this crypto market. And Brad Garlinghouse had a seven minute interview just yesterday that I'm going to break down for you step by step. Let's get started. The SEC Chair Gary Gensler, and he's really just doubling down yet again on his reluctance perhaps to engage with the crypto community. We know that he's very bearish on the asset class in general. How do you deal with that when you're getting the same sort of response all the time from the SEC? Look, I'll just start by saying I think it's super frustrating. You, you see markets like we have here in Singapore, certainly even what we're seeing in Hong Kong, uh, the UK, Dubai, where the governments are partnering with the industry and you're seeing leadership, you're providing clear rules and you're seeing growth. And then, frankly, that's why Ripple is hiring there. 80% of our hiring this year will be outside the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, 80% of Ripple's hiring have been outside the United States. And in my personal opinion, there's an unbelievable movement to globalize the planet and it's 100% intentional and unfortunately because the United States is the global leader in GDP as the world's number one economy that will mean America especially having its status with the reserve currency is the one that's going to fall to the mean the hardest part of that means innovation like crypto and even as far as AI is going to take a hit. And I believe it's 100% intentional. You see, part of the way America could help solve its debt crisis is with innovation. The pace of innovative growth could help offset the national debt. However, that's the problem. Innovation is being hindered here in the States. And Brad Garlinghouse breaks down how bad it actually is and how late America is as far as a global leader in the crypto industry. You know, my thoughts, I haven't watched the testimony from yesterday uh, yet. I've read some of the coverage. And I guess th th my observation is one of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and thinking you're going to get a different outcome. Gary Gensler is a hammer and everything looks like a nail. You know, just saying people need to register does not mean that the, what the law says is that these are securities. In fact, what we now have seen, at least in the Ripple case, is the judge in our case very clearly, succinctly said XRP is not a security, period. And I think that point genuinely needs to be hammered home. XRP is not a security, period. End of discussion. XRP currently sits below 50 cents today, exactly where it was before we destroyed the SEC. And XRP today, in my opinion, is more valuable than it was just a couple months ago. Despite the fact that the price is the same, we as retail investors have mental clarity of what's going to happen. There is no regulatory uncertainty. And Matt on the Moon Lambo channel said something that really hit home. The effects of XRP not being a security are not going to be felt right now in f as far as price is concerned. It is going to be felt during the next crypto uptrend. That cannot be ignored. 
And Waters Above gave a great update as far as where he thinks XRP's price is going to go. You guys all know I've been talking about a short-term decline before we finally head into the next bull run. And $0.41 cents is his target. And remember, he's been extremely accurate with the targets he's been putting out. Let's see if that happens. But back to Brad Garlinghouse. Period. I want to pick up on that because, yeah, for, for people that aren't aware, so your native token XRP, the SEC had said that it was going against the securities law. The, the U.S. court ruled in your favor. The SEC has now indicated that it could end up appealing that decision. So what was your reaction when that news came through? Well, on one hand, it's frustrating. You know, you, you have a government that has unlimited resources to keep fighting a fight they've already lost, but there's no there's no recourse. And so, you know, it, for Ripple, it's, we've obviously spent well over $100 million already defending this case. Uh, and it, we are very optimistic. You know, the judge has already said very clearly XRP is not security. What they have asked permission from the courts to appeal isn't actually whether or not XRP is a security. That, that is still clear. It's more nuanced about whether or not cert in certain circumstances, uh, the, the, if there's a transaction, there'd be an investment contract. So I, I don't know what the court will rule about whether or not they're even allowed to appeal right now. Uh, but I, I, am, I remain very optimistic because I think as you go up the appellate court system in the United States, you actually get more conservative. And uh, that, I think, bodes well. And at the end of the day, I said this a long time ago. The facts are on our side and the law is on our side. And we'll continue to prevail in court because of that. I'm interested when it comes to, because you just mentioned that the amount of hiring that you're doing, 80% of it is going to be outside of the U.S. over the course of this year. When it comes to who is going to be the next crypto hub or, or define themselves as the global crypto hub, do you think that the door is permanently shut on the U.S. being able to do that? I wouldn't say it's permanently shut. It's definitely uh, it's it's definitely a tough spot. You know, the U.S. is still the largest economy in the world at 22 percent of global GDP, and so I, we will have a presidential election. There will be a change, or well, maybe there'll be a change. I don't know if Biden's definitely running. I, I don't comment on those things, but I think there'll be some shift as you see new administrations come in. I think eventually Congress will be frankly called to act. And I think the fact that the SEC continues to lose in court, there's another decision recently around uh, a grayscale ETF conversion. Yeah. And look, the judges are using really harsh language about the SEC. In the grayscale case, the, the judge is ruling with, with there's an appellate court, a unanimous three judge panel saying that the SEC was being arbitrary and capricious. These are pretty harsh words for a government agency. And guys, there were a couple very interesting things that Brad Garlinghouse mentioned right there. The potential of a new administration coming into play, who knows? But definitely, 100% Congress is going to be called to act. And with that, regulatory certainty will hit the United States, allowing the full-fledged red carpet to be allowed for the crypto bull run. Guys, I have to say this. The SEC has lost credibility and jurisdiction in real time and we're soon about to find out just how much the courts are against gary and the xrp community started the domino effect so in terms of your battle with the sec is this something that you you think you would like to see reaching the supreme court for instance Look, I, I would like closure and I'd like to not have it you know, ongoing. I'm very optimistic. If the SEC wants to push this to Supreme Court, that'll be even a more final verdict than what Gary Gensler believes is not what the law says. When it comes down to your profitability, because you're, you're facing issues with regulators in the US, we've seen really thin trading volumes, very low liquidity in the, in the space. How does that affect your, your profitability as a business? Look, there's no question when crypto is going through its boom cycles that that's a better thing for the whole industry. But Ripple has, I've been in the company eight and a half years, and every time we've gone through what are often called crypto winters, Ripple has grown. Uh, we're in a very strong position with a very strong balance sheet. As you mentioned earlier, we uh, closed one acquisition earlier in the year. We have another pending acquisition right now. We're continuing to play offense uh, in a whole bunch of different ways, and we're, we're growing the business. We're growing our customers. Uh, we're growing our product suite. We believe that in our customers are coming to us really seeking for us to be the infrastructure provider around blockchain and crypto technologies. 
And we're gonna, we started with payments, now we're in custody, we'll continue to expand beyond that. When it comes to that acquisition that's pending, that's Fortress Trust, yes. and it's a crypto custodian. Overnight, we understood that the CEO of Fortress Trust said that hackers had taken some money. I understand that, uh, that Ripple has made those customers whole, but do you think that, firstly, all of the issues around the space have been ironed out or they're being ironed out in terms of the vulnerability for security and has enough trust really been regained by users of these products to, to spark some sort of movement back into the space in a meaningful way? Yeah, I, I think it's an important thing to talk about. The, uh, this particular com compromise was about an end user compromise, a tool that certain customers were using to access uh, their crypto got compromised. And frankly, that was through, as I understand it, kind of a spear phishing attack, which Frankly, it affects crypto, it affects traditional banking, it affects securities. Uh, it's super frustrating when those things happen and I think the whole industry needs to continue. I mean the whole industry, not just crypto, I mean the financial services industry because if the end user's accounts and credentials are compromised, there's always going to be risk, whether it's crypto or something else. But look, to your macro point in this, Ripple felt it was important to build trust with Fortress Trust, and we made those customers whole. That is, that business has really done well, and they, I think, are doing a great job of serving their customers. And we're glad to be able to support it and bring it into the Ripple fold. On the regulatory front, because we have seen a lot of progress in other jurisdictions outside of the US, across Europe, the UK, Middle East, here in Asia, some of those frameworks are quite narrow in the way that they look at crypto. Do you think that that also can be a challenge in the sense that yes, you do have regulatory clarity, but sometimes the regulations are quite strict. Yeah. And so it's also difficult to operate in those sorts of environments as well. Like, I, that is not something that keeps me up at night. You know, R R Ripple received here in Singapore uh, an in principle approval for our major payments institution licensing. Uh, we've applied for licensing uh, something called VARA in Dubai. You know, the, the strictness doesn't bother me, it's the lack of clarity. If I know, and I think this is true for the whole industry, not just Ripple. Ripple has always tried to lean into regulatory, you know, engaging regulators and being a good actor. It's when it's not clear what being a good actor looks like that it makes it hard. We're willing and happy to invest, even if it's strict, that, that's fine. What it doesn't work is frankly what the United States and Gary Gensler continues to propagate. Confusion masquerades as power to the SEC. The more confusion, the more power they feel they have because they're just gonna keep filing lawsuits. And that's the big problem, isn't it? The confusion is leading to problems. However, for the first time, I think there's a real discussion being had about why Gary Gensler did a 180 and Crypto Darren shows this clip from the Cato Institute discussing exactly why Gary Gensler has done this. Ask Elizabeth Warren why Gary Gensler is doing this. Ask big banks and ask his paid interests. Ladies and gentlemen, to cap off this video for today, I'm gonna play you this clip and I hope you all gain a better understanding of the demon we're dealing with but at the end of the day i also want you to exude confidence with everything that brad garlinghouse said that out of the other side of this shit show we will become the new one percent ladies and gentlemen this is the bearable bull here thanks for tuning in as always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. You, Gary Gensler, and I mean, you have the opportunity to say this directly to him when he testifies in front of your committee later this month. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to, to Gary Gensler about that? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble with understanding how his perspective has shifted because I spoke with him before his confirmation. You know, he was at MIT at the digital lab there. Uh, reports have come that he was actually trying to become an advisor to Binance before coming into the SEC. So it seems that his perspective has shifted on this, and he seems to be echoing you know, some of my colleagues in the Senate uh, that seem to have a perspective that um, the, only, the only use for this is for some sort of malicious behavior. And I don't understand what's created that mind you know, that mind shift in, in uh, Chairman Gensler's perspective. But I'll tell you this, the posture that he's adopting now is damaging the industry, it's damaging our potential to lead. And I think it's up to the Senate and to the, to the House of Representatives to bring this into check. What we need to do is have more uh, hearings on this. Uh, you know, the, the Senate is controlled 
by Democrats. Uh, the Banking Committee has had far too few uh, hearings on this. We just had an Appropriations Committee hearing uh, where uh, Chair Gensler came before us, and we need to be doing more of this oversight and having more of this discussion so I can uh, get better insight into what's in his mind and also so I can share with him my very much business person, entrepreneurial perspective and my perspective that America is best when we lead.